Hello, I'm Pekka Rossi from University of Oulu, Finland, and I'm going to talk to you about uh, the experiences, prerequisites, and limitations of on-site systems in northern Finland. Uh, about the content today, uh, we're going to go first for the references, the materials we got this, the the, the, core, uh, the project we got these results, and then we'll go for the Finnish government governance and management of on-site systems in Finland, and then we're going to continue to research where we looked at the effects of re uh, cold climate as uh, effects of cold climate in the on-site systems in Finland and Sweden. I'd like to thank Vokko um, Laukka, uh, Juho Kinnunen, and Elisandra Heidersheit on collating these slides with me. Uh, for this presentation. For the references, so we had uh, a few years back this on-site uh, project ongoing uh, where we collected the results. So this was the small-scale wastewater treatment effects uh, systems, governance, efficiency, resources, uh, recovery, uh, environment contamination risks, innovative solutions uh, for process optimization. So a long name, abbreviation, on-site. Uh, the project had University of Oulu, Luleå Technical University uh, from Sweden and Finnish Environmental Institute uh, in collaboration all in all. So I want to thank all, all the project researchers uh, from, from this project. Uh, this presentation is going to summarize two of the end results from the project. Uh, the Governance On-Site Sanitation Report by Suke, led by Suke. And then we have our Juho Kinnun and our PhD researcher. Uh, his PhD uh, work uh, article on factors of the effluent quality on on-site systems. So we'll start with the on-site system uh, uh, management in Finland and the requirements. Um, in general, all the um, property owners in Finland who have a wastewater treatment system on their, uh, on their uh, area are considered on-site sanitation system operators. And the, the limit, the size limit goes up to 100 PE. So there might be high schools, uh, holiday resorts, schools, and so, etc. Uh, having their own on-site systems. And all of that below 100 PE are defined as on-site system sanitation oper operators. Uh, above that, it starts to be wastewater treatment systems. If we look at the numbers in Finland, you see in this slide, um, we have approximately 15% of inhabitants all in all uh, outside the sewage network. So that means 286,000 approximately uh, uh, habitations uh, outside the sewer network. And in addition, we have a lot of uh, our um, second houses, uh, approximately 400,000, uh, more than 400,000. And some of them, or majority of them maybe, uh, are, are outside the sewage network. That varies and this, this list is not exactly complete. And proportion of treatment units not fulfilling current uh, treatment requirements is somewhere between 55 and 67, uh, 67%. I'm going to come back to these numbers, why this is like this, in the next slides. Um, most common system uh, coming from the previous legislation, returning to that also in next slide, is septic tanks without no uh, secondary treatment and approximately 42% uh, of the permanent inhabita habitation outside the sewage network have this solution. Uh, then number two is sand filter or uh, infiltration systems, 13%, uh, and then package plants, 5%. Um, Current treatment requirements uh, are in, in Finland, they are quite similar to Sweden and Norway. You can see the numbers there, they are quite similar on, on BOD removal, phosphorus remo removal and nitrogen removal. Uh, for consideration in Arctic regions, uh, Finland is quite sparsely populated uh, and, and there's long distances, but the road network is rather broad, so all kind of uh, um, logistics, considering wastewater systems, on-site systems, is uh, still rather doable compared, for example, to Greenland or, or other places. Uh, the original legislation for the on-site systems is coming from the 60s, and that actually is coming where you had the septic tanks and, uh, and no secondary treatment systems uh, coming from. So that was the requirement that happened in the 60s, and then there was the update in 2004. This was this called uh, feces law in, in Finland, and uh, the, the requirements for the on-site systems were tightened. However, it started to be a bit of a heated uh, political discussion and a lot of dis public debate on the demands of this uh, law for multi populated regions, and it might become expensive for the house users to change their on-site systems. So it got heated up uh, on the discussion and ended up being uh, watered down in the, in the following decades. Uh, so 
currently the situation is that uh, the, it has watered down in a way that it's only for new houses, it's for renovated houses, houses with, that are 100 meters distance from uh, lakes or rivers. And, and for that reason, quite a lot of the different uh, old, older systems still have uh, the septic tank, tank solution uh, as, as their system. And then if you go for the management structure, uh, everything on considering the on-site systems is under Ministry of Environment. But if you go uh, for the uh, lower levels from there, and the main, main uh, working uh, level is the municipal municipalities. And there the permissions for building these and require, uh, getting the information which type of systems there is per, per plot, per house, uh, is uh, coming from the building authority. So there's the building per, uh, Building permit is defining the, the, the solution, but then there is the environmental authority who's surveilling these, giving the supervision and guidance. And there's a bit of a deviation here. Uh, so knowing what's, what, what's where is on the building authorities, but then knowing what are the effects, what is going on exactly, uh, considering the, the um, natural impacts, for example, um, what is the ef um, efficiency of the systems, that's on the environmental side. And these are not, all of them are not municipal level. They might be uh, on a level that has several municipalities with the same environmental inspector, but the municipal level is always with the building permits. So, and this causes a bit of a mismatch, uh, considering the day, flow of data, for example, flow of information. And that gets us to the challenges. So what we are right now considering the management of legislation, we have a um, lack of systemic uh, data collection due to the reasons I, I just said. So this com complicates the status assessment. So what's really going on in a bigger scale? And uh, effects of supervision is, uh, uh, has its issues. Then uh, the lack of supervision is the other thing, uh, sorry, lack of resources. So there's the supervision issues and, and, and what the property owners know, it's up to them to know what's going on. So there needs to be the information flow to them. And that causes some issues. And then there is the common awareness and competent, uh, competences. So environmental impacts are not fully known because there's not good uh, or, or complete list of the, uh, the on-site systems all around uh, Finland. So this is what has happened that every municipality has the re uh, requirement to uh, know the list of the on-site systems, but they might be uh, sporadic and uh, how they are listed is varying from uh, municipality to municipality. So there is no continuous list for, for selected watershed, for example. And then this is lack of political will from the perspective that this has been going on as a long discussion already. And um, now sh it should be up, maybe updated again, but this doesn't really come up because it's been already in a long political process by now for almost two decades. And also there are some, of course, uh, inappropriate planning, installation and maintenance issues that might be taken into account for operational uh, failures. But that gets us to the research we've been doing, uh, considering the factors affecting uh, effluent quality in on-site systems. So uh, we have some research questions that we did with uh, Juho Kinnunen's uh, uh, research. So how does the effluent water quality uh, vary across the systems and processes types? And how does it compare to reg regulated discharge limits? Uh, does unit age load local climate conditions, affect the effluent water quality of soil-based systems or package plants. So these are the main two uh, systems that we have uh, after those so large tank uh, solutions. So soil-based systems as filtration, field salt infiltration, uh, and those package plants as built uh, package systems for process. And does the uh, type of biological and phosphorus targeting process used signific significantly affect the effluent water quality? The dataset for this research, so we compiled all the information we could find from Sweden and Finland that included nine different scale, uh, national scales projects uh, on, on sampling of these on-site systems. You can see here on the map the different uh, sites. Uh, there was in total 300 units that were monitored, uh, in total 1,300 samples, uh, sampling occasions. The bigger the circle is in, in the map for one specific site, that means more and more of the samples taken from that specific uh, unit. And you can see there that this is quite uh, emphasized more in the southern parts of the countries and less in the north. We did, uh, during the on-site project, we did take samples also in the north and they are added into this, uh, into this data set. 
And then we used, uh, started to compare that with the weather data we get from URA, uh, regional reanalysis of Europe, for Europe. Uh, we looked at the temperature, precipitation and snow water equivalent uh, uh, seven days uh, and uh, 30 days prior to the sampling. Uh, what was the weather during the sampling all in all? So how, how did that have an effect on the temperature and the rainfall and the snow, snow melt, uh, snow melt, uh, snow water equivalent uh, decline? So data set we divided, that uh, data set of, of, of plants, uh, we, we've been looking for the effect of weather and age and load uh, to soil-based systems and package plants. Then for biological part, uh, BOD and nitrogen removal, we did a different deviation. And then for physical chemical uh, phosphorus, we looked uh, a bit differently again. Uh, there we had uh, phosphorus coagulant for the package plants mainly. And then we had sand filters and then sand filter uh, with a re phosphorus removing media. So we had these different approaches depending on what we were looking on the comparison. Uh, we concentrate first now on the uh, weather questions. Uh, but about the data set a bit more. Um, so considering when these were sampled, you can see here in the picture, uh, the first one, uh, the different months and how many samples were taken per month. Main, main biggest amounts were during autumn. Uh, then if you look where the minimums are, July is the holiday season in, in Finland and Sweden. So we had less samples and then winter time, cold season. You can notice that all of those season, uh, months from uh, December, January, February, March, Slowest, uh, smallest values. Uh, sampling day average precipita uh, temperature was um, 6 degrees and 75% and of the sampling days were above uh, 0 degrees. These were quite new uh, systems so the average age was uh, uh, 6 years and the samples were taken mainly as grab samples, some of them also as, as composite. You can see the relations there. And also the precipitation uh, was mainly zero, but there were also precipitation days there. You can see in the, in the e, e, e figure. So if you start to look at the results, so these are now divided based on soil-based systems and package plants. Uh, first one is the BOD that removed rather well. You can see there on the dashed line is the Swedish limit and the, the whole line is the Finnish limit. And, and for, for BOD, systems seem to be functioning well. But if you look at the middle uh, figure there, the B, you can see there the total removal of, of phosphorus. And there the regulations were not met uh, in by 28 uh, uh, of Finnish package pl uh, plants and then 25.4 uh, for Swedish plants. And you can see the bit of, bit of difference between the uh, soil-based systems and the package plants there. Uh, so out of these, which were quite new, still the, the, the requirements for the phosphorus removal uh, were not met by qu almost quarter of the uh, systems. And then if you look at the weather factor, that was a bit surprising is that there was no significant effect of temperature uh, or dilution due to precipitation either in uh, package plants or soil-based systems where you can think that there could be filter infiltration of the precipitation or so snow melt, but you could, we couldn't see an effect. However, there was a correlation of air and water temperature that you could see. So the, uh, the, the sewage water in the, in the systems were correlating with the air temperature. However, again, uh, not much data was available from the coldest conditions. So we were look, there were some, of course, with minus degrees, but even more could be have, had here for, for more detailed analysis about the coldest uh, environment, uh, coldest uh, temperatures. And the age was a bit of a factor in effluent phosphorus increase in soil-based systems, but not that much in package plants. Uh, then going for the biological processes, uh, phosphorus coagulants and, and phosphorus filters had lower uh, phosphorus concentration in effluent than in contrast to the sand filters. So there was a, a bit of a difference there. You can see in the uppermost picture figure there. And then um, soil-based systems had more stable BOD removal. Uh, you can see that one also there. Uh, so. And, and then for the uh, biological, uh, type of biological process did not have a significant effect on, on the nitrogen removal. So in conclusion uh, from all of this, uh, lessons learned from the management structures and, and how they can affect the surveillance and the data collection. So the, the, that could be one take home message from the Finnish system. Uh, importance of legislation and, and work and risks that you can have there. 
And then considering the effects of, of weather uh, for the soil-based systems and package plants, uh, they, they did not have correlation of the effluent quality. So these conditions we couldn't really see. However, they didn't see it have an effect. However, uh, there are specific biases that we can pinpoint here. Uh, these units were selected based on our knowledge from the different uh, campaigns. Uh, they were, were selected with the working units. So they weren't completely random. They were selected where the unit was working. And there was bias in the seasonality. So with the, the colder, colder uh, months were not sampled as often. And then the ge geographical in distribution. So we were talking about the Finland and, and Sweden. The southern parts are more emphasized than the colder parts. Uh, bearing in mind still that this Finland and Sweden, there's no permafrost, for example. So the, the soil is uh, still, the, there's frost, but the depth of the frost is not that deep. There's no permafrost, so that you have to take into account. But still, the northern conditions were not that uh, efficiently taken, uh, uh, were not, uh, the distribution was uneven. Uh, so what we could do, for example, more data on cold conditions and, and more random snapshot sampling campaign, for example, to any given system might give us a bit more uh, maybe realistic results of the current conditions. So based on this, we know that, the, for example, the phosphorus removal is not filling the requirements in quite a few of the systems, but the reality can be even, uh, e even uh, lower numbers if we would start to take a more random sampling campaign. Right. Thank you.